Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well and continuing to stay healthy as we move through this winter season. I know it's been a tough time for a lot of people, but if you're anything like me, you've been trying to stay at least a little bit involved in aviation. Now, whether that means flying or just watching some awesome aviation related content on YouTube, I hope you've been having some fun while you're doing it. Now, today I wanna to talk to you about a plane that I really didn't know much about until I started researching it. And that plane is the Mooney 301. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So if you're into aviation, then you probably know the name Mooney. Actually, I'm sure you know the name Mooney. But what you may not know is that back in the late 70s and early 1980s, Mooney was actually developing an airplane to compete directly with the Cessna P210 and the Piper Malibu. That's right, Mooney developed a six seat pressurized piston single that actually had some really unique and interesting features that weren't seen in any of the competitors of the time. Now the Mooney 301 prototype was created by Mooney Aircraft Company under the design leadership of Roy Lopresti. Now, if you've been around our channel for any amount of time, you have heard the name Roy Lopresti. He's responsible for designing many of the speed mods that we have on our chair D6. Now, Lopresti was aerodynamically minded with a passion for optimizing the performance of aircraft based on their aerodynamics. So it's very fitting that we see a lot of subtleties on the Mooney 301 that really remind us of this focus. Now the Mooney 301, unlike other modified Mooney models, was a complete ground up design. Its purpose was twofold, to be good looking and well built and to be fast. Physical characteristics showed some similarities to other Moonies, but differed in some key areas. The 301 had a much more conventional aft swept tail compared to other Mooney models, and it sat much higher off the ground. It also sported a fixed horizontal stabilizer with a moving elevator that had trim tabs. Now I know all of this sounds pretty mundane and run of the mill, but if we look into the airfoil and the wing on the 301, things get much more interesting. Now, in order to get the high-speed performance that the Lopresti design team wanted, other previous Mooney airfoils had to be scrapped, and they started with a brand new airfoil for the 301. Now, this airfoil was the NASA NLF-0315 airfoil. Now, without getting too much into what all of those numbers and letters mean, essentially, we know that that means it's a natural laminar flow airfoil. Now, this was actually a very interesting choice because Choosing a laminar flow or a natural laminar flow airfoil has some real world design implications. Now, if you know about laminar flow, then you can sit back for this part of the video. But if you wanna know some more about it or you don't know anything about laminar flow, then uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into it and kind of nerd out for a minute here. Now, there are two types of flow that you can have over a wing. Essentially, you can have laminar flow or you can have turbulent flow. Now, there's a common misconception that one type of flow is always better than the other, and that's just not true. It all comes down to the application in question. In order to talk about airflow, we need to talk about it in terms of drag, and in order to do that, we need to define a couple of terms here. First, we have what's called viscous drag, and essentially viscous drag is just drag due to friction of the air molecules over the surface of the wing or whatever they're flowing over. You can think of it sort of like sandpaper over wood, right? That's how the air molecules act when they impact the wing or when they flow over the wing. This type of drag is also known sometimes as skin friction drag, um, which is pretty self-explanatory when you think about what we just talked about here. Now it's worth noting that viscous drag isn't just impacted by the shape of the airfoil, but it's also impacted by any imperfections in the skin of the airfoil or even debris such as bugs on the leading edge of the wing. So the next type of drag that we need to talk about is pressure drag. Now pressure drag is due to flow separation from the wing and it's due to a pressure imbalance between the upstream flow and the downstream flow. So with those two brief ideas out of the way, let's look at how they actually apply in terms of laminar versus turbulent flow. So in laminar flow, the air tends to move smoothly over the surface of the wing, over the streamlines of the airfoil. It was really great for high speed flight because it results in relatively low skin friction drag, which is the predominant source of drag when we're talking about airfoils and aircraft. 
Now the downside to laminar flow is it tends to cause flow separation from the airfoil. Now this is bad because it results then in pressure imbalances between the upstream and downstream flow or that pressure drag that we were talking about earlier. And pressure drag is very substantial and that pretty much degrades the drag efficiency of the airfoil uh, to the point that it mitigates any of the gains that you might have had using a laminar flow airfoil. Things like bugs or debris on the wing can trigger this um, transition out of laminar flow into flow separation fairly easily. So maintaining laminar flow in actuality is actually very difficult to do. So turbulent flow fixes this problem, kind of. Turbulent flow is not even close to as efficient as laminar flow when it comes to skin friction drag. But the upside with turbulent flow is it delays that transition, that flow separation. So whereas you might have a laminar flow airfoil that you have flow separation two thirds um, or maybe even one third from the leading edge of the wing, in turbulent flow, that transition is moved much further aft in the airfoil. Now this is great because it reduces pressure drag, which is very predominant. The big question here is, do we go for a turbulent flow airfoil and hope for flow separation to be mitigated or do we go laminar flow and run the risk of flow separation? And that's really the design question that the Presti team was facing. So moving back to the Mooney 301, I'm not gonna speculate too much as to the considerations that the Lopresti design team made, but let's just leave it at the fact that they decided to go with a laminar flow airfoil in order to hopefully increase the top speed or the cruise speed or really the speed regime of the aircraft in general. Now this newly designed airfoil was not the only interesting design concept incorporated into the Mooney 301. The design team also incorporated huge double slotted Fowler flaps that covered 90% of the trailing edge of the wing. Now with these long flaps, obviously the design team had to move away from the traditional aileron flap design because there simply wasn't enough room for conventional ailerons on the wing of the 301. So they moved to a non-conventional spoiler and aileron configuration. So the control surface design moved away from the conventional design and incorporated both ailerons and spoilers. So the spoilers were on the top of the wing and the ailerons were small and just consisted of the outboard 10% of the wing on each side. Now, this is a concept that we see applied to jets quite a bit, but to my knowledge, it would have been one of the only, if not the only piston aircraft to ever incorporate spoilers instead of just strict ailerons. Now to put the Mooney in the same category as the Malibu or P210, of course it had to have pressurization. So the design team incorporated a pressurization system that allowed the 301 to have a 9,000 foot cabin at about 25,000 feet. So at this point in the video, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what was the actual performance numbers of the 301? The 301 utilized a 360 horsepower Lycoming TIO 540 engine that propelled it to a top speed of 262 knots and a cruise speed of around 225 knots. Now the crazy thing about the 301 is that even though the plane was relatively fast and had small wings with high wing loading, the huge Fowler flaps allowed it to have a landing speed of just 53 knots. Now that's pretty incredible, all things considered. While the prototype first flew in 1983 and accumulated about 70 hours of flight testing time, Mooney suffered a financial crisis and they had to scrap the project before production could begin in 1985. Now, even though this seems to be a pattern for Mooney, it's still really sad that a potentially great aircraft like the 301 never saw production. Unfortunately, the prototype never flew again after 1983 and was eventually scrapped and sent to different flight schools for teaching purposes. So what do you think of the Mooney 301? Was it a potentially great aircraft that never got to see production or was it doomed from the start in comparison to the competitors of the day? If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and go down to the comments section and start a conversation. We always love it when we get to talk to you guys down there and see different conversations that are going on. It really helps spread the aviation community, which is what we're all about. If you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing and maybe telling a friend about our channel. Word of mouth is one of the greatest ways that we can spread this community, spread our channel, and really be involved with people. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening or day or whatever time it is for you. 
but don't forget to get your aviation fix and we'll see you in the next one.